Hi, guys. I wanted to check in today because, as you all know, especially those in New Orleans, today's our 15th anniversary for Katrina, uh, when Hurricane Katrina struck our shores and changed our lives forever. Um, I lived in New Orleans. Um, actually, since 2000, I've lived in New Orleans. I'm now married to a local and have kids that are locals. Um, and when Katrina hit, I actually saw it on the news and through streaming from local uh, TV stations. I happened to be in Florida for my niece Cameron's eighth birthday. She was having a pool party. So I went to Florida for the weekend. I had two days left in my residency training and I packed a bikini and shorts and the outfit I wore to charity that day. And that was it. And that's what I left with thinking I'd be back after the weekend to finish up my training. And lo and behold, uh, the universe had other plans. Um, now for me personally, it was already a difficult time because I lost my dad from ALS on July 6th that year. Um, and so I was, to be honest, a lot of it is a fog. Um, but I do remember, as if it were yesterday, that image on the TV uh, when my sister-in-law at the time came and told me, I don't think you're going home right away. And I saw that large... Uh, storm coming towards the people I love. Um, yeah, it's nothing like it. I just started learning how to text. I mean, we all kind of learned to text at this point um, and was reaching out to folks, begging them to leave. Fortunately, uh, those I spoke to took my advice and got out of there. They hightailed it out of there, some never to return. Um, others weren't so lucky to get out. I, uh, you know, ended up going up to my mom's place in North Carolina, volunteering for the Red Cross, came back down, immediately started volunteering and working with folks, first responders to uh, reach out to folks who lost everything, not knowing what I had left. I was a renter at the time, so in a lot of ways I felt that I was lucky. Didn't have renter's insurance, but at least didn't lose my home uh, in the way that folks who own homes do. Um, and I had a lot of people to lean on. So, you know, as I said, my training ended two days later. So I was on unemployment food stamps for quite some time because my job that I was projected to take was on Paris Avenue. And when WWL did that flyover, some of y'all might remember showing all the different landmarks underwater. It was about six feet underwater, I think, at that stage. So, um, you know, that didn't happen. And, um, you know, I think in a lot of ways, I was lucky in that I was already in therapy. I was in a pretty intensive analytic therapy um, training analysis at one point. Anyway, I was with a really talented, amazing therapist who I owe my life to, who got me through the times with losing my dad and then Katrina, even though she lost things herself got me through that time to a place where I was healthier and able to handle things. And I think because of that and because of support from friends who had also lost everything but were willing to give me what they had um, to help me get by and friends who let me stay with them, uh, I was able to move into a place of what we call post-traumatic growth. Uh, with so much trauma, I was able to grow and build on what had happened to me and use it to treat others. I think that's a big part of why I ended up working at the VA, which I've done for the past 10 years. And the VA is giving me a lot of lessons, uh, lessons that trauma doesn't go away. It's not something you can put on a shelf and expect it to dissolve. You might put it in a box, but at some point that box is gonna open. Um, and I'm saying that because I've seen a lot of folks this week who've reached out to me either as patients or friends or colleagues who are pretty traumatized. And, you know, they're tr they've been triggered by what's going on with Hurricane Laura. And, you know, understandably so, either because they have family there or just seeing the images. And I think they've thought that they've gotten past Katrina. I think all of us to some extent have been triggered by the images and things that have been happening uh, to our state right now. 
Um, but if you find that you're really more than just bothered, but really having nightmares coming back and images coming back and concerns coming back, it's okay to reach out for help. I think, you know, I've seen from being at the VA that I've had veterans in the World War II and Korean era coming to us because oftentimes a friend from Vietnam era told them the, the VA is there to help you. And for the first time talking about traumas that they experienced when they were 18 years old. And these are folks that are in their 80s and it's still been there, um, even though they thought they packed it away uh, to live their lives without it. It's still a part of them and it's still something they've had to deal with in order to move forward. So there is a place for post-traumatic growth. I see a lot of examples of that right now. Uh, folks who are reaching out to Lake Charles and to the areas that have been affected by Laura and moving forward and paying forward what so many people did for us on the Gulf Coast uh, 15 years ago. And I'm really proud to be a part of this area and community of folks who give back so much. I mean, part of what makes New Orleans, New Orleans is that we love to host people and we love to make people feel at home. And I love that that's what's happening now to folks who have had to come here from Lake Charles and other areas. Um, but you know, if you're having a hard time with that, please reach out, whether it be to me or to a trusted friend or to the suicide hotline, or whatever crisis line, your pastor, uh, your, uh, your boss, whomever, whomever you're comfortable with, reach out, get some help. There are folks there that, that care about you and that will help you and they help you move from a place of trauma into a place of growth. It is possible. Um, anyway, I love you guys. I adore you. Um, keep going and, uh, who that can't wait for the games. See ya. <laughs>